Hello! Welcome to a Cuphead speedrunning tutorial. I'm Red Sonia. I speedrun Cuphead, and I'm here to show you how to do that as well. Okay, so starting off, you want to turn off VSync, especially if you're running Legacy. If you need help running Legacy, let me know in the comments, I'll walk you through it. Okay, so for running all bosses, you'll want to just immediately start pressing options, get through that first story part, and as soon as you enter Grandpa Kettle's room, hit options, and exit to map as soon as you see him. Otherwise, you will soft lock it and have to restart the entire game. It's terrible. You don't want it to happen. Trust me. Then you're on the map. Luckily for all bosses, you only need the coins that you get from the Apple Boy and Forest Follies. So you want to make sure you get all the coins from Forest Follies. So here's the thing about Forest Follies. You want to just start pressing Y, just start dashing through it while mashing P Shooter, just so you kill whatever's in your way and you, you can just safe to keep dashing. Here's the acorn skip. I have it marked with that red arrow. If you dash right where the red arrow is, you will actually clip it to the cliff and go under the acorn machine so you don't have to waste any time killing the acorn machine. It usually saves about 10 seconds, which matters so much in speedruns. It's between a gold or a green on the splits. Next up we have the shop glitch. You'll notice I have my controller on the screen for this one. The thing about this glitch is you have to hit A and B, select and exit at the same time, in the same frame. So you'll go to the roundabout, all the way over to the right. As soon as you get to it, hit A and B at the exact same time. You will buy a roundabout and exit the shop at the same time while you're exiting the shop. Mash A as fast as you can, select item, and you'll buy Lobber as well. And you'll want to equip your items as fast as you can, so upon leaving the shop, hit Y, and equip items like normal. Then we go into the root pack. What you want to do with the root pack, you'll be starting out with roundabout, face it off to the left, away from the enemy, fire off three shots, because Potato is actually immune to damage in the very beginnings. This will cause him to have damage in the beginning of a fight before it even starts. Something you'll notice is my weapons are firing very quickly, and that's called a weapon swap glitch. Something that's only allowed in Legacy. If you constantly mash left bumper while firing a weapon, you will constantly be putting out damage. And if you fire off two X moves at the onion here, you'll do extra damage. And then from there, you kill the carrot like normal. Okay, next up we have Ribby and Croaks, which are the toads here on the riverbank. They have several different ways they can start out, several different ways they can kill you. And this time, they choose to go boxing gloves. So you basically just have to dodge their attacks while attacking them with a weapon swap glitch. And you can either get a phase skip or deal with the whole fight entirely, like this time here. Basically what you want to do is just damage them down, deal with that phase, and then move on to the slot machine. Secondly, you can get this glitch here. You'll notice I have a red circle. Stand where the red circle is, duck, and fire. You can actually damage them both at the same time, dealing double damage. You're building up 
twice the super, which means more X moves, more of a glitch. You'll be causing the super skip to happen, and you'll be going straight to the slot machine. Whereas this other scenario here, Next up, we'll, we're going to have Goopy. Goopy Legrand is relatively easy. You will follow him while doing the weapon swap glitch. He's very easy. He's probably the easiest boss in the game. You're going to want to just constantly damage him. Do not go for the parry, because you'll be getting an extra piece on the card later on the ranking, and that adds more time to your, your splits. He should be over very, very quickly. After Goopy, we have Hilda, who actually does have several ways she could die. She has the Hilda skip, which she will skip the second phase that she has, or the glitch where she gets stuck in the second phase. You will have to take intentional damage in order to cause this to happen. You'll notice I intentionally got hit, build up another card, and get hit again. Whenever she comes back through, you'll use your iframes and fire off an X move. Twice. This will cause her to hopefully have the Hilda glitch or the skip. If it doesn't happen, it just wasn't in the RNG for you, and you'll have to deal with the moon phase. If you deal with the moon phase, as soon as her head is stretched out, you'll want to fire off an X move as soon as she is stretched out on aiming towards the eyebrows where I put the arrow. You also never want to fire a nuke at her. Single X moves deal more damage when she's stretched out. You're actually dealing double damage. So you'll want to remember that. Oh my god, I finally got the glitch! Oh my god, this has never happened for me before. I've never gotten the glitch, and it's so great. Oh, bless it. If anything else, this is a good thing from tonight. Oh, thank god. Okay, now we're on Cagney, the final boss of Isle 1. He is relatively easy, self-explanatory. You just fight him. Easiest way is to stand on the far right platform, fire away. Actually, if you dash when he has the seeds out, those brown seeds, you dash right into the middle, the middle one you will cause him to freeze, and from there you just nuke him down, and Cagney is done. Okay. 
All right, and now we're on to aisle two. You walk into the dice house. I press Y, dash over to King Dice as quickly as you can. Get to the cutscene. Get to aisle two. Get to Bon Bon quickly. Bon Bon has a lot of RNG involved with her. She has several mini bosses to throw at you, as well as her gun of cotton candy. So one thing you want to do, you want to fire your roundabout just like you did with the potato on root pack. Set up a trap for these enemies. As soon as they spawn, turn around, start firing your weapon swap glitch at them. Burn them down as quickly as possible so you can get through all three of her phases quickly. And as soon as that third mini boss is down, get to her castle, start firing off lobbers and roundabouts as before she spawns, so she will get attacked before she even spawns. This will help you try to get the early kill before she moves at all. Okay, so you've beaten Bon Bon, now it's time to move on to Wally Warbles. Make sure you grab your bombs from the bomb guy and you'll be moving on. He is, in, what, in my opinion, one of the hardest bosses in the game, and the first aerial boss. This is going to give you an opportunity to do the Luigi swaps, or the double taps. You'll notice in my weapon corner at the bottom left, I am not doing the mashing like I am for other bosses. It's more of a heartbeat, like a one-two, one-two rhythm. If you do this, you're actually putting out optimal damage damage on the aerial bosses, and you'll be burning them down very quickly. If you're not feeling safe enough to dodge the feathers, or be close enough to him, just hang back, use your machine gun, damage when you can. One thing you'll want to do when he hits the baby bird phase, you want to pause when Baby Bird dies. Pause very quickly, unpause, and you'll see the stretcher with Wally moving in much quicker than he would if you had let it just run its course. The safest place to be is under the gurney, the bottom left. Just shooting as much as you can. If you only have one hit point, please don't do this because it's very RNG as to where the bullets will fall and you will die. All right, Wally is dead, so now it's time to move on to the second aerial boss, Jimmy, the genie. Now Jimmy, unlike the other few aerial bosses, actually has a hidden hitbox on Legacy on the bottom left. And you'll notice, if you use your bombs on the bottom left corner, you will build up cards, which means you're hitting him. So constantly damage that bottom left corner, unless you're not safe, which right here in this case, and you'll constantly damage him. Another thing, when these columns appear, if you use an X move on one, you're actually dealing more damage. If there's multiple faces, make sure you kill both, because that's double damage to Jimmy himself. The faces on these columns actually deal damage to Jimmy himself, so make sure you do as much damage as you can. And from here on out, Jimmy is essentially a normal normal boss. You'll just attack him, use your X move, use your super, just get him down as quickly as possible. Alright, and then on we go to 
Beppy the Clown. Beppy is one of my personal favorite bosses. He has a glitch on Legacy that is amazing. If you deal three X moves worth of damage to him, you can actually cause him to go into the Beppy glitch, which will make him skip literally every phase that he goes through. The balloon will appear. All you have to do, attack the balloon, and that's it. You deal damage to the balloon, kill him, this will usually take 40 to 50 seconds. It's the easiest glitch in the game to get. And he's just gonna melt down and die. Congratulations. Alright, from Beppy we're going to move on up to Grim Matchstick, the dragon. He has a couple ways he can die. You can either do the fight out the whole fight like it's supposed to be. You can kill him kind of early. He doesn't get a knockout, but he stays stuck in a phase. Phase 2. The most popular way and easiest way to kill him is in Phase 3. You will actually dash behind him. This is also based on cloud RNG. You'll need some good platforms to stand on. And you'll just constantly damage. You'll be safe in a little hitbox away from him. And you just damage him like normal. The glitch, however, if you deal more damage than that phase is used to, you will cause the game to freak out, and he will get stuck in the second phase, and you just damage the head. He will never go into phase 3, he'll just stay stuck like Cagney does in file 1, and you just kill him. Grim Matchstick is not super difficult if you have great cloud RNG. He will melt down super fast. Okay, so you are officially done with Isle 2. Time to move on to Isle 3 and head to Rumor Honeybottoms. Rumor Honeybottoms has, has a bit of RNG with her. Her platforms can be very tough. And she has several different things she can throw at you. There's the triangle that shoots out lasers. There's the ball. There are the bullets that she shoots at you. It really just depends on what you get. This is a fight where you can actually just watch what I do and basically mimic it. She is pretty easy with all things considered with the platforms. And down goes Rumor. Next up is Dr. Call. Dr. Call's robot is a big deal. He has a glitch where you can kill him in 15 to 20 seconds instead of two minutes. Okay, so if you damage him uh, top, middle, and bottom as quickly as possible, you'll notice his heart comes out in the middle. You want to damage the heart until it is cracked, 
as soon as it's cracked. Stop machine gun damaging it as quickly as you can. Damage it with three bombs instead, and one X move. All the while, you want to make sure you do not have a full nuke, otherwise you will over damage him. So manage your, your X moves accordingly. Make sure you never have more than three or four. Alright, moving on from Dr. Call, you're going to go up to Sally stage play. Sally is another pretty easy boss. You just want to damage her like normal, like any other boss. She does have one trick to her. She has a hidden box up to the top left. Sometimes you have to feel around for it. Shoot roundabouts up there. Make sure your cards are moving up. That means you actually are doing damage to her. As soon as she comes back to the next phase, continue to damage her. She's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. You just keep weapon swap glitching her, just nuke her down as fast as possible, and get down to Warner Vermin. Now moving down from Sally, we're going to Warner Vermin, otherwise known as Tom and Jerry. This one you'll want to constantly keep doing your weapon swap glitch. In my personal opinion, this is one of the easiest bosses other than Koopy. There's a few easy bosses in this game once you see what they actually do. You'll want to save time, do not parry on the floor because you don't want to have a parry on your card. That's more time lost off of your splits. And you just keep damaging him down as quickly as possible. There's no trick to him. He's just a straight up regular boss. All right, moving on, we have Briny Beard. Briny Beard can be difficult. He has a few different RNG points to him. He can summon a shark, a squid, sea dogs, and the sea dogs are pretty terrible. They can be run ruiners, but you'll learn to deal with them. He also shoots at you with an octopus. He will always shoot one yellow, and all the rest will be parryable pinks. You'll want to keep jumping and shooting him as much as you can. In Briny Beard, I do hit the parryables. It's just more damage you can deal to him. Because of the constant jumping, I feel like you're doing less damage. And the X moves make up for that. You'll also want to set up a trap for him, like you have done with other bosses. You'll face the roundabouts out. While he's activating his final phase, turn back around, damage as quickly as you can. Briny Beard's dead. Next up, we have Kala Maria. Kala Maria is the final aerial boss of the game, and she can be pretty fickle. She has a few things about her. She summons several things that can mess your run up. You want to make sure you keep your double taps up for the Luigi swaps. Make sure you stay on the rhythm with your swaps, or you won't be dealing as much damage as you should be. If you're feeling brave, you can tank the hits from those ghosts, or do what I do and just avoid them. Just keep yourself safe from having to do a reset run. When she summons the eels, she's going into her second phase. Make sure you stay right in front of her face you will avoid the beams and won't get turned to stone. And 
from there, when she turns into just her head, make sure you stay very close so you do not get turned to stone. If you do, it will not end up very well for you. Alright, and now we have the final boss of Isle 3 being Phantom Express. You're going to start out against a ghost. Doing the weapon swaps, uh, you will have no problem killing these eyes that he is throwing at you. Just keep constantly jumping up and down, you will kill them all, don't worry about it. Make sure you collect your X moves from the, the ghosts, the pumpkins dropping them. Jump and X move the skeleton as quickly as you can. You'll kill it very quickly. Next, you want to set up a trap, just like you've done before. Aim down. This way you'll be damaging at least one of them, because one of them will come and electrocute you, like you've seen in casual playthroughs. Just nuke them down, get them down quickly. And you'll go all the way over to the left on your card. Set up a trap for the, the train itself. This way, when you open up the door, you will have already have roundabouts shooting at it. And same as every boss, just kill it as quickly as you can. Just like any other boss, any other casual style run. And on to King Dice. Okay. So King Dice, there's a couple things about him that you should know. Easiest way to get the dice roll that you want, you want to crouch under the dice, and as soon as you see the number you want, hit A twice as fast as you can. Just double tap it. And guaranteed you will get the number you want every time. The best route to go is to go with 2 with the poker chips, 4 with the dominoes, Hit the safe after that, and then either go with 8 with the 8 ball or 9 with the monkey if you're comfortable with the monkey skip. And I'll show the monkey glitch. It's uh, personally not easy for me to get it, but it's easier with the more practice you do with it. My route, I go with the 8 ball if it's a clutch run. But the mini bosses, you will just kill them like anybody else. Uh, there's no glitches to them, there's no secrets. Survive. Get to the the cards with the finale. Freaking nice. Alright, so this monkey glitch. The way you want to do this, you can either try and get a match in the cards and get him to go to a different screen, or hit the cards, doesn't matter if it's a match or not, make him come towards you, and you move the screen yourself, or he will not move frames and continue to move off the screen. That's the only way you're going to get him to glitch out and go off the screen and knock out. Alright, now it's on to the final boss with the devil. You've made it this far. You got this. Hopefully I'm helping you get a new personal best with this. 
Obviously, you want to hit no. Don't give him his contracts. Now, in Legacy, you can duck when he puts his hooks together, and you will avoid any damage at all. He also has a hidden hitbox to the left of the screen, just in the bottom left corner, kind of like Jimmy. You can do some damage there if you like, when he has a spider head, preferably is what I do. Otherwise, damage him like normal. He's just a normal fight. When you jump into the, the hole to go to the final phase, pause. It will skip an animation of Cuphead being scared and continue to damage him. And you made it. I hope you found this helpful at all. If you did, check me out on Twitch. I'm Red Sonya. I speedrun pretty much anything I get my hands on. If you'd like to see my personal speedruns, look me up on speedrun.com. Just under Red Sonya, you can see my video on demands, my personal times, any other game that I do run, and reach out if you need any other help. Let me know. Hopefully there will be more of these if this helped. And good luck speedrunning. Thank you for watching.